The mystery behind the death of India's mathematical genius Srinivasa Ramanujan. Well, who doesn't know about Ramanujan? This mathematical genius is the one who is recognized worldwide for his contributions in continued fractions, number theory, and of course the infinite series. The most enigmatic part about him remains the fact that he was completely self-taught, a genuine autodidact. This 32-year-old genius died cheap suffering from tuberculosis. Let's find out what happened to the Indian boy genius of whom we have almost forgotten. I'm glad to have an audience like you. Support and motivate me by pressing subscribe button. I upload videos every day. Don't forget to press the bell icon so that whenever I will upload new video, your phone will notify you. Number 1. The Dietary Compromise in England it was 1914 and the war was in full swing. Consequently, England was cut short of the customary Indian comestibles that formed a staple diet of the Brahmin mathematician. However, Ramanujan maintained his dietary discipline with rigidity, even if it meant the inadequate intake of the food. This, along with erratic research hours, carved the way to the breaking of his health gradually. Number 2 when he was hospitalized and admitted in 1970. For three years, Ramanujan worked his magic in Cambridge, which also earned him PhD in 1916 for his contributions in the subject of highly composite numbers. However, he had given too much to his research in the last few years and his body was giving out. In 1917, he was for the first time admitted to a nursing home in Cambridge and it wasn't before the fall of 1918 that he showed some signs of improvement. Number 3. When he returned to India Physicians assumed that the exposure to the familiar climate in India would be advisable for Ramanujan. Therefore, in 1919, with the war being over, Ramanujan had it towards his motherland, India. Unfortunately, when he reached Mumbai on March 27, 1919, there was a relapse of his illness. The familiarity of his native climate wasn't enough to keep Ramanujan's health from deteriorating. He survived only for another one year. Number 4. He was all skin and bone when he came to India. His slight gain in weight ushered hope among his colleagues and doctors in England. However, when he reached India in 1919, his family in India was quite shocked to see his broken health. Ramanujan's clothes now hung loose from his body. He was showing signs of chronic fever and had started coughing phlegm. Number 5. Was it really tuberculosis? From November 1917 to the summer of 1918, Ramanujan was being treated at the Matlock House Sanatorium Matlock, Derbyshire. In February 1918, Cambridge mathematician G. H. Hardy revealed some interesting facts about Ramanujan's illness in a letter to his friend and colleague Sir Joseph Thompson. He had mentioned that although tuberculosis has been proclaimed as the cause of his ailment, there had been no signs of crude lung trouble such as coughing or spitting. In fact, Dr. Kincaid, who ran the institute at that time, was himself doubtful about the diagnosis. Number 6. Was the diagnosis gone severely wrong? Long after Ramanujan's death, further probe into his untimely demise indicated that the cause of his ailment was hepatic amoebiasis instead of tuberculosis. In 1918, amoebiasis was considered to be a tropical disease. D.A.B. Young, in his 1994 journal Notes and Records of the Royal Society of London, opined that the specialists treating Ramanujan in England had limited knowledge regarding the treatment of amoebiasis and neither did they have any knowledge of Ramanujan's history of dysentery upset. Number 7. Was Ramanujan suicidal? In notes and records of the Royal Society of London, Young had also mentioned that amoebiasis is an ailment which may upset the mental equilibrium of the patient, often leading them into depression. Quite shockingly, he had mentioned in his journal that Ramanujan had once tried to end his life by jumping from a station platform in front of an underground train in London. The credibility of the story remains murky, as according to the young, the amount of incident owes its origin from a story narrated by Hardy at a dinner party in 1936. It is said the Royal Society of England hushed the incident up as suicide was considered a criminal offence in England during those days.
Ah, well, 100 years after the demise of one of the greatest mathematician of the world, we can't help but wonder if Ramanujan didn't have to die at 32 had he been diagnosed better. What are your opinions? Let us know in the comment section. If you like my videos and want me to upload more videos, kindly share and subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching.